Nice. Big crash. Thus ends version one of the uh, streamliner. Um, I've learned a lot over the last several tests and uh, I've been able to accumulate a lot of useful data for uh, future development. So first of all, I found some information about the stability of three wheel cars with the wide front configuration. Basically, I didn't know what I was doing at all when I designed this car, and it's uh, no wonder that it handles so badly. Uh, there are four main ways to increase the stability of a three-wheel car. Uh, first is, of course, to move the center of gravity as far forward as possible. Um, hence, cars like the Morgan three-wheeler have its engine literally hanging off of the front axle. Uh, my center of gravity actually turned out to be behind the midpoint of the wheelbase, which would actively destabilize the car. Um, the next way to improve stability is applicable to all cars, and that's to actually lower the center of gravity in the chassis relative to the roll center. Uh, next, and probably the most obvious, is to actually widen the track of the front wheels, which widens the cone for the ro uh, car's roll action. Of course, this increases the frontal area of the car, and the last way you can actually improve the stability of a three-wheel car is to actually lengthen the car, which effectively should move the center of gravity forward relative to the overall length of the chassis. I can't easily move the center of gravity any further forward by moving the components of the car uh, just due to lack of space. Um, I can add ballast, and I'm going to try that in some tests to see how this affects the handling. Uh, for the second item, I can't move the weight any lower in the chassis just due to space constraints again and the necessary ground clearance. Um, the bottom of the body is just 15 millimeters uh, below the roll center, thus it would require a huge amount of ballast to make any significant difference here. Uh, the third item is the obvious choice, uh, is to make the front track wider. Uh, it does increase frontal area, but it would give me more room to move components uh, further forward and lower in the chassis so that I could essentially improve multiple areas of the stability. Um, and I could lengthen the car, uh, but I think that the middle section of the body is already at the max length of my uh, printer. Uh, so I have installed the ESP32 and a six channel uh, receiver. I also learned about the most amazing thing with uh, modern RC receivers. The FlySky receiver I'm using has something called iBus, which allows me to receive all six channels into the ESP32 over a single wire with actually less latency. I was able to pull some good data, which uh, shows that once the streamliner is moving, the stability control is actually doing very little and in fact uh, can destabilize the car and cause oscillations at higher speeds. So ideally the stability control needs to take into account the car's speed. Uh, I'll also touch on this later, but I think as the car is traveling faster and faster, a variable steering rate based on the speed would be a very nice thing to have. The last important data point that I was able to pull was the vertical acceleration data. This shows just how bad any disturbances in the road are to the car. You can see in this graph hitting a large expansion joint caused a uh, vertical acceleration of almost three and a half G and the impact is even higher, uh, but most likely the uh, sensitivity range of the accelerometer was exceeded, so it's not valid. So finding a smooth surface is gonna be important and the suspension could definitely use more droop travel, which would hopefully lessen the uh, shock of the impact if it does hit a irregularity. So on to the testing. First up, I tried adding ballast to the front of the car and doing my best to move the weight forward in the car. This made a significant leap forward in the stability of the car. I can drive it uh, just fine on sidewalks, uh, but it's starting to get too fast to be able to drive on a sidewalk safely. Uh, 
The narrow front tires are causing issues though on the road. Um, they're getting caught in the grooves of the pavement, uh, which is causing a really bad tram lining effect, which also throws off the gyro and the stability control. So the next test is to actually widen the front track by 14 millimeters. Uh, we're gonna go from 50 millimeters front track to 64 millimeters. Um, I did this just by extending out the uh, knuckles themselves. And this proved to be a huge improvement in the handling, but the tram lining of the narrow tires is still terrible and it's causing the gyro to go all sorts of crazy. So the next test was to try wider tires. Uh, I wanted to keep the track width the same, so I had a relevant comparison, uh, but the tires uh, go from uh, four millimeters wide on the narrow ones to 10 millimeters wide. Uh, this was a huge leap forward um, driving on a concrete road and uh, caused the car to tram line much less. So I went off for a quick test on a longer road. Uh, this road is actually in much better condition and I was able to get to 60 mile an hour consistently. On my uh, second to last run, I finally hit full throttle on a 3S battery and it hit 93 miles per hour. Now I'm not sure if the GPS is 100% correct, but it was definitely significantly faster than 60 mile an hour. I tried to go ahead and replicate that uh, run while filming, uh, but my luck ran out as well as my uh, radio range. Uh, I figure I must have uh, moved the antennas when changing the batteries. Um, resulted in a pretty big crash and as you can see the uh, tube broke in half from an impact of the top side. Uh, the body is meant to be very strong in one direction but of course crashing uh, doesn't happen in one direction. So after a trip home to repair the car with uh, super glue I had uh, one final test and that was the rear tire. I decided to try a bicycle inner tube which is around a 40A uh, durometer rubber. I took the uh, inner tube and actually stretched it over my existing wheel with the uh, TPU tire and glued all the way around. And it actually came out looking really trick, almost like a real tire. Um, this ended up being the single biggest improvement for the car, um, especially in launching. I can roll on the throttle much quicker and I can actually steer the car while under power without uh, having a drastic oversteer. Uh, this completely changed the game for me, and I was able to pick up speeds much faster. Um, it's probably time to talk about uh, some of the big flaws for the car other than it just breaking in half. Uh, the biggest issue now is the actual braking itself. Uh, all the braking on the car is done by the rear tire, uh, which is very destabilizing. Um, I can't keep crashing this every time I want to stop the car, so I need to improve the braking system. Uh, maybe looking at add, adding downforce, or some sort of air brake or parachute. Uh, I'm not really sure at this point uh, what the best system will be for this car. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. Uh, I really need to get focus on making this uh, reliable and easy to drive. I'm starting to realize that's a big part of the challenge of speed racing, but that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and uh, stay safe out there.